I am Dr. Manoj Khanna. I work as a principal scientist at Water Technology Center, Indian Agriculture Research Institute, New Delhi. Today we will talk about irrigation water management for sustainable development. Today, if we look at the global water availability, fresh water is very, very limited and rest of the water is uh, stored in ocean or uh, some uh, which is not available to the and use a for irrigation or any drinking purpose. If you look at the Indian water condition, our water resources and liabilities are like that. Our fresh water resources are 4 percent of total water available in the world. Land is only 2.3 percent which is available to Indian condition and our population is more than 16 percent of total world population and our total rainfall is only 1170 millimeter. While our annual fresh water requirement for irrigation, domestic industries, thermal power and others is being indicated here. If you look at the scenario in 2025 and 2050, this availability is going to increase exponentially and this is a very big challenge for maintaining water availability for irrigation water management for sustainable development. If you look at the scenario in 1990 and 2000 and 2025, if we look at the available water for irrigation, domestic, industrial use is very limited and it is a big challenge for everybody to manage water in such a way that it is for the sustainable use and for agriculture development, for livelihood security and the development of the country. Per capita water availability is going down and it is going to be a big challenge in 2050 where the water availability per capita is going to come down and we will be facing a great challenge towards water availability for agriculture sustainability. What is irrigation? Why we do irrigation? We want to put moisture in the soil. We major question for irrigation water management is when, how much and how to apply. We will try to answer these questions in this discussion and where, when to apply, how much to apply and how to apply. And we want to know what is the effective way of to measure the water and this is done through soil moisture measurement and we want to deliver irrigation to the whenever it is needed. If you look at the definition of efficient irrigation water management for sustainable development which not only saves money, water, energy, labor, fertilizer and to protect our groundwater, minimize pest and disease incidence to the crop and not only improve the quality but also increases the yield of the crop for a sustainable development of the agriculture system. Let us see what is the current scenario of mismanagement of water. You can see how our farmers or water users apply water and such a mismanagement of water is happening all across the country which is a very big challenge to correct it and manage it properly so that water is available for the future generation and for sustainable development. Management of the water require water logging, creating a problem for water logging, secondary salinization and you can see the water logging in the country is happening to the tune of 2.5 million hectare. Salt affected area is almost 3 million hectare which is causes leading to the product loss in productivity as well as income to the farmers. Now question is when we started we talked about when to irrigate, how much to irrigate. That is defined as irrigation scheduling that means when we have to irrigate water, when the crop is needed and how much to irrigate that is very very important questions which we wanted to answer in this discussion. Why scheduling is required? Because as we saw in the earlier slides, 
irrigation consumes more than 75 percent of total water and uh, irrigation land which is total arable land 34 percent of total land and gives the food and fiber production. Scheduling is the most controllable element in the soil water plant relationship. There is two options we can do direct scheduling as well as indirect scheduling in this direct scheduling is soil or plant based indirect is a ET modeling through and which are the factors which are important to the scheduling first is a cost direct to one time only indirect is continual accuracy is important where the direct scheduling is important and actual versus theoretical that means whatever you calculate theoretically irrigation scheduling system has to be clearly matched with the ground truthing as well as actual application. Let us see direct scheduling which is a plant base it uh, premises is highly variable past disease soil effects soil base address to the soil spectrum of soil water plant relationship you can see in the figure all the components of the water movement are depicted. Let us see soil water measurement it is a site specific measures effect of irrigated and rainfall measures effect of soil evaporative losses measures the effect of crop water use <clears throat> portrays the effect of soil layering addresses full depth of crop root system and can disclose irrigation effectiveness and low cost irrigation input. Let us see how the crop takes the water crop takes the water majority of the water takes from the top soil and the top 75 percent of the roots take the water this is depicted and we have to plan irrigation management in such a way that water is available in the top 25 75 percent of the area and which is can be available to the plant. One of the most common method of soil irrigation scheduling is tensiometer which is a direct matter method and it is dependent on water quality temperature, but it works for all soil types. It is very simple reliable it is a manual you can make it automatic and you can attach it to control systems of the irrigation. How the uh, tensiometer operates it is a typical device in which water is uh, at the bottom it is a porous ceramic tip it is a hollow tube which is filled with the water and it stays in the equilibrium with the soil water tension and that is how it depicts how much water is required by the soil. It is a very common method which is a very simply can be used by the farmers and you can see the schematic diagram and it is also shown in the how it has been shown, applied into the field where the readings can be directly correlated with the soil moisture and whenever the soil moisture comes below the threshold value you can irrigate and when soil moisture value reaches to a field capacity or the where the saturation is available then it is filled and you can stop the irrigation. This is also shows the dial of the tensiometer. One of the important parameter for this irrigation scheduling is soil water measurement. You can measure gravimetric way. Gravimetric way is a very simple method. You take the soil moisture, you take the soil moisture, measure it, weigh it and put it in an oven for 24 hours at a 105 degree centigrade and take the dry soil weight and calculate the soil water availability or soil moisture availability. It is a very simple uh, method, but it is a in situ method and every time when you go to the field you have to take the soil moisture. Another method which is a very commonly used by the farmer is a feel and appearance. It is dependent on the experience of the person. He can see the soil and feel it and by appearance he can say soil is dry you need to have a irrigation or it is already moist. So, you need not to stop uh, or you have to stop the irrigation. This, these are the another advanced methods of nutrient moisture meter which are advanced technologies available for measurement of soil moisture. These 
methods are bit expensive, but they give you exact reading of soil moisture. Based on that, you can plan irrigation schedule, when to irrigate and how much to irrigate. Another method is a time domain refractometer or TDR, which is commonly known as, which is another method by which you can measure soil moisture. Another very cheap or simple method is the electrical resistance block and meters in which the soil uh, in which the resistivity blocks are kept into the soil at a desired depth and a meter measures the their resistivity and which is correlated with the soil moisture and you can measure the soil moisture and decide when to irrigate, how much to irrigate and when to stop irrigation or when to start irrigation. Simple infrared thermometers are another option, again a bit expensive technology you can use for soil moisture measurement indirectly. Now how to apply irrigation? Once you have decided when to apply and how much to apply, another question is how to apply. Now irrigation which is very very important point at a 57 million hectare area is the largest irrigated area in our country. Productivity although is very low, irrigation systems are normally supply driven. Here I meant by supply driven means they do not consider the need of the crop, but they directly supply as and when water is available. Our irrigation efficiency is very low to the tune of 40 percent. There is no lack of technology, but there is a need to enhance water productivity through better irrigation management, better irrigation scheduling. This is what we are discussing today. There are various irrigation methods. It can be divided into two different categories, surface irrigation methods, which are commonly known as dead level basins, graded borders, graded furrows with surge flow. And they are, if you look at the characteristics, you need to have a uniform land grading, reduce runoff and controlled application is not possible in these kind of irrigation systems, you need to have a more control where we use more modern methods which are also known as pressurized irrigation method which are commonly known as drip irrigation, sprinkler irrigation or micro irrigation. Here low flow requires good filtration, reduced application loss, we have a reduced runoff and you can have a controlled application. Here controlled application means if you need to apply 5 centimeter of irrigation water, the possibility in pressurized irrigation method is possible. Otherwise, in a surface irrigation method, there is no technology available where you can measure the depth of irrigation. So, you are dependent on all the soil moisture gadgets for efficient irrigation management. Look at the irrigation efficiencies at the various irrigation methods. You can see if you look at the total application efficiency which is very low in a surface method as compared to drip or a sprinkler. Our objective is to enhance the irrigation efficiency or application efficiency so that we can save more water which can be applied to the more area to cover large area or to bring the more area under irrigation to enhance the productivity as well as production and for sustainable livelihood. Irrigation efficiency, I am making an statement that has to be improved to 60 percent for to this for surface water and 75 to 80 percent when we are using ground water for irrigating the crops. Improved irrigation water management technology, if you look at the if you look at the on warm farm water management technology, most common is the land leveling and in this more modern methods are coming like laser land leveling which can be used to enhance the irrigation water application efficiency through modern methods of irrigation such and you can also use surface irrigation method but properly designed check basin or border strip irrigation, furrow or surge flow irrigation, raised bed planting methods as well as pressurized irrigation method. By introducing these kind of methods you can enhance the water application efficiency by almost 20 to 30 percent and reach it to the tune of 60 to 90 percent 
by which we can save huge amount of water which can cover large area as well as increase the productivity as well as production. Normally in our system as I mentioned you earlier also our system is a uh, irrigation water supply system is major and major irrigation projects water has to travel a large distance from the reservoir to the farmer fields losses starts from the source to when it reaches to the farmer's field and it losses are tune of something like 25 to 40 percent. In a current emphasis government of India is putting up all these open surface channels are moved into the pressurized pipeline irrigation network which can save not only water but also save land and avoids the problem of land acquisition. In a field level you can use field channels which are lined which saves a lot of amount of water by lining these channels by different methods. If you look at the, at the field level precast concrete channel is a very commonly used practice in farm area which saves 15 to 20, 20 percent of water before it reaches to the crop. As I mentioned you earlier laser leveling is a one of the most important technique by which you can save 20 to 25 percent of water during land preparation and it improves the water productivity, water efficiency, application efficiency and saves lot of time for the farmers for application of water. These are the components depicted here for laser land leveling. You initially <coughs> measures the area where it is a you need a cut or fill then this information is passed on to the tractor and driver needs to run it for hole over the field and it saves it takes averagely 4 to 5 hours per hectare and this technology is commonly available to the farmers through government support as well as private farmer support. You can see the how the uh, laser leveling is done on the field. Another methodology by which water saving could be possible is the raised bed planting in wheat crop. It saves almost 15 to 20 percent water is applied on a and in a furrow crop is grown on a raised bed and it not only saves the water but also improves the yield as well as avoids the crop in a direct contact with the water which will avoid impact uh, incidence of pest and diseases. You can see drip irrigation can use uh, a lot of water saving to the tune of 30 to 50 percent and it not only increases the yield by 50 to 100 percent. You can use this in all type of vegetable crops and all type of orchard crop. One of the important area which need to be give emphasis is the groundwater management. 50 percent of our irrigated area is using groundwater and its productivity is much higher because you are pumping water, but it is created a problem by of groundwater depletion. Although it is available on demand you need minimum infrastructure and development is only 40 percent and but in many area it is being over exploited. The need of the hour is you need to have a conjunctive use of water. That means wherever you have a surface water available use surface water. In the absence of surface water availability you can use ground water as a intermittent measure so that you are not over exploiting the ground water and properly use of ground water could be possible. You need to have a an better management through surface as well as ground water. It will not only stop the water energy nexus that means where which is a big problem in our country that you consume lot of energy for pumping of water and excessive pumping leads to the depletion of ground water causes a problem of water quality and all these problems can be avoided by properly use of surface as well as ground water. You can have a management strategies in canal command area it needs to be a demand based system that means whenever you need a water supply should be managed in such a way 
wherever the water is required they should be converted into demand based management system you need to have a proper operation and management maintenance of the irrigation system then only it is possible to manage large irrigation systems for best or higher productivity in if you look at another problem is the as i mentioned you conjunctive use of surface and ground water is the another methodology by which you can improve the efficiency of the irrigation water you need to include community leaders community participatory irrigation man method is the need of the hour until unless everyone thinks it is a community product or the community commodity or you yourself is involved and then only you can have a better irrigation management and social aspect has to be looked into to improve irrigation water management lot of capacity building technology or activity needs to be done to train water managers irrigation managers as well as farmers non government agencies can be involved in this for training of farmers as well as water managers you need to have a here i am moving little bit towards the water conservation and improving the water efficiency important point is if you conserve more water you can use increase the efficiency you cover large area by laying of lining of field channels to reduce conveyance losses laser leveling of uh, proper border and basins proper design and operation of basin and border layouts so that better application of water could be possible application of water in a alternate furrows raised bed cultivation if you look at the other uh, on farm water management technologies irrigation scheduling as we discussed in the earlier part as per the demand of the crop use of mulching is another methodology water application through modern irrigation methods such as sprinkler for field and vegetable crop drip and micro sprinklers for orchard and vegetable crop use of surge irrigation technology is another method by which you can increase water use efficiency if you look at the water management in the rain fed areas for through watershed management we have to whole conceptualize the idea of watershed management that means you have to consider watershed as a entity in situ water conservation whatever rainfall which is happening in your field conserve that reduce the runoff and so that your excess runoff is not gone into the field channels and waste you need to have a flow plowing field leveling bunding and there are various measures to stop runoff and soil and water conservation measures should be applied for increasing the water conservation in a particularly rain fed areas if you look at the ex situ conservation of rainfall where you can develop farm pond or village pond and these reservoirs once you collect this water into the farm pond or reservoir you need to use it very judiciously and the only way you can do it by using modern irrigation methods and you can apply only irrigation at a critical stage then only you will be able to raise a crop good crop as well as better irrigation water management this is a typical farm pond where the water is been stored and used it for critical irrigation time and use it and grow the crops use of modern tools is another way of doing it modern irrigation methods such as modern tools such as remote sensing geographic information system latest information technology simulation models as well as decision support systems can be used for better irrigation management and this technology can be used and supplied to the farmers or irrigation managers for better irrigation management i stop here and i would like to conclude that better for better irrigation management you need to have a better irrigation scheduling better measurement of water improved irrigation methods improves latest technologies in a both irrigated areas as well as rain fed areas 
in a canal irrigated area use surface and ground water judiciously in a conjunctive manner to have a better irrigation matter management as well as improved productivity this not only will increase water productivity crop productivity crop production and lead to the sustainable livelihood for the farmers as well as sustainable our ecosystem thank you